okay so that was primarily the first introduction to vlsi section that we we that we covered uh, till the last class uh, today we will move into vlsi devices okay so when i say vlsi devices what do you understand by vlsi devices the transistors mm -hmm. okay just transistors for maybe the capacitors and all those things for the mixed signal design yes uh, not just transistors i mean actually we will we will start with mos capacitances here okay so what is a mos capacitance what does mos stand for metal oxide metal oxide semiconductor metal oxide semiconductor so what we are essentially saying is that sir, three layers like first layer is metal second oxide and third is semiconductor yeah what we are saying is there is a metal there is a semiconductor and in between them there is an oxide so metal is simply a conducting plate a uh, semiconductor is semiconducting but semiconducting means it can conduct so it is it means that there is a dielectric oxide between two conducting plates and that clearly means it's a capacitance hmm so mos by the name itself represents a capacitance so metal the metal gate silicon dioxide and then the body and this becomes a mos capacitor when you put in the source and drain region you call it a mos transistor but we will initially start our analysis of a, from the mos capacitor we will move to mos transistor in the next step is that okay so uh, when i say that this is metal oxide and silicon there connected with each other what happens at these connections at this interface or at this interface any ideas you can use the question i'm saying that when we bring metal oxide and semiconductor together you know we brought them we brought them together we brought them in contact with each other so when they come in contact with each other what happens at the interface so basically three of these materials have different uh, uh, electron affinities so uh, when we bring them together so basically there has to be some uh, rearrangement of char charges uh, that that has to happen there for for this device or the material that we are uh, overall creating to be stable or to have a uniform potential across if we are not applying any potential so basically the band bending happens here energy bands okay. so all of you understand what is electron affinity pradeep used the term electron affinity there what is electron affinity uh, not gandeep someone else has to tell So yeah. sure, I think it's the energy required to uh, take the electron uh, to the uh, well as like to the outer motion. Yes, the energy required for an electron to escape from any material that is called electron affinity. So I would not say valence band because, for example, metals also have electron affinity. Hmm. Uh, so uh, they don't have a valence band though. but uh, electron affinity essentially means the energy it takes to for an electron to escape from that particular material so every material has some electron affinity uh you remember this much See, so this, yes. so so won't we call that a work function that, that yeah thing. work function and that is also referred to as electron affinity okay okay sir Sir, yes, Devya. Sir, even from uh, for me an energy level to the uh, outer outer space. For me, I mean for, for me, me energy level. 
अभी हम नहीं आए फर्मी पे अभी हम वर्क फंक्शन और इलेक्ट्रॉन एफिनिटी पे हैं वेलकम टू फर्मी एनर्जी डोंट वरी यस नीरज एक्चुअली इन माय बीटेक आई हैव स्टडीड एफिनिटी एंड वर्क फंक्शन इज डिफरेंट टर्म्स लाइक एफिनिटी लाइक एफिनिटी इज फ्रॉम लाइक वन इज फ्रॉम फर्मी लेवल एंड वन इज टू टेक इलेक्ट्रॉन फ्रॉम कंडक्शन लेवल like we have uh, we have done as a work function the sum of affinity plus one more time like in the beta we have study in this manner okay mm. let me check that and let me correct that for you like, like i will come back on this point a little later but uh, do you understand that there would be some energy that every electron like that electrons in any material would require to move to the vacuum to escape from the from the substance yes sir hmm? so the vacuum level or universe level let us say is constant hmm and energy required by different devices by different materials would be different so if it comes to plotting those materials so if let us say this is a vacuum level one material could be here another could be here another could be here can that happen Yes, sir. Hmm. And then when we bring these materials together, what needs to match? So for the level. So okay. Again, I'm slightly confused. We're talking about all this electron affinity, Fermi level, everything. Uh, I do understand that some of you have, uh, uh, like, some of you did mention to me that. in the last semester you did not cover semiconductor devices or uh, mosfets in much detail so are these things uh, coming like uh, clear to you also because you studied them in your class 11th 12th or uh, in another course or is it all going over your head if you don't uh, see, sir, i think uh, we understand this much yeah sorry Uh, yeah so like um we understand this much it's just that um, we didn't cover all the frequency responses and the other various types of capacitances capacitances in a cmos um, like what i mean in a mosfet so like uh, yeah that's all so that part so you guys we, have covered because that is what i intend to cover today right okay. so we didn't cover device physics yeah so see i don't want to enter into too much of device physics also because there is a separate course solid state devices for that this course is not that but i i do want you to understand that there would be there are bands and there is band bending and there is uh, a complete uh, you know language to semiconductor devices so yes, so this jargon is not entirely clear this jargon is not entirely it's not entirely clear it's not entirely clear so most of the jargon you will get clarified when you do the ssd course and uh, but i i want you to realize that there is some jargon around like that is that much clear yes sir so there will be when you go when you go and do the ssd course you will talk about band diagrams and band bending and and all that stuff uh so if you are interested in device physics that is where that is that is one course that you should definitely do in this course we are more into circuits but to understand circuits and their operation it is important to know that there is a physics behind it i don't want to go into too much of physics here but i want you to realize that there is a physical basis to whatever we are going to talk about from now on is that much clear yes sir yes sir hmm? neeraj you had a 